morning. morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. So our speaking engagement went really well. It went awesome. You did a good job. Thank you. You, of course, did a good job, but you always do a good job. I was really impressed. For your first yeah. public speaking engagement, I think you did awesome. Yeah? Yeah. All right. And the, the Q&A could have gone on all night. Yes. We had to actually cut it off because they had other <laughs> things they wanted to do after we got done speaking. Believe it or not, we weren't the main act. Which well, I, I don't understand. I don't know if that's true or not. I think we were the only act. They talked about business. Yeah, that's true. But, um, yeah, it was great. There were several people who were interested. Had, people came up and asked us questions afterwards. So now I have a whole bunch of new questions that I can share with you guys. I have a whole list of stuff from their questions. So it went well. Russ did great. I'm very proud of him. So that's awesome. How was your workout? Uh, workout was good. Today was um, shoulders and triceps and abs. I thought I saw you doing calves. I did not do calves today. I stretched calves. Ah, uh, I did not okay. do calves. Okay. All so. right. I did legs today. I was able to do my 160 walking lunges, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, so that's that's good for me. And what are you having for breakfast? I am having oatmeal, and with my oatmeal, I'm having my usual hemp seeds, chai, chia, no, chia seeds. I gets confused. Um, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Spirulina um, and hemp seeds, are you blueberries gonna, and a banana. Are you going to have any cinnamon today? You know what? I forgot about the cinnamon. Yes, I do. Sitting right here. Cinnamon. There we go. I didn't think we were up there for a second, love, but we are. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, so since it's the weekend, we figured we'd uh, broach the uncomfortable subjects of erectile dysfunction and gas. And they came, the, the erectile dysfunction is something that's been talked about a lot in my classes. And the last couple of days, I've, I've been posting different things, different facts about different um, vegetables. And people have been complaining, especially about broccoli, right. giving them gas. Right. So let's start with that first. Um, the first issue with, with gas with broccoli is that your body doesn't have the bacteria that it needs to be able to process it well. Um, because if you're a meat eater, those bacteria obviously are very different than right. the bacteria for processing plants. Right. The good thing is, is if you keep eating it, you'll feed the good bacteria and the good bacteria will grow. Right. It'll crowd out the bad bacteria that's there for processing meat and it'll stop giving you yes. gas as badly. And that's true for most vegetables. Um, the green, yellow, and red, you know, the green leafy, all those vegetables. Um, if you eat them consistently, the bacteria in your gut will get healthy and you'll stop having problems with gas. Right. You found an article about gas and beans and put soaking them overnight yes. with a little bit of vinegar. You want right. to talk about so, that a little bit? And we started doing that. So yeah, I was reading an article. Actually, I can show them this. I one. believe it was in How Not to Die, actually. Oh, well, yeah? maybe, maybe it was an article I got. Well, I don't know if it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> However, um, and it talked about um, soaking your beans, um, not just in water, but, but with like two tablespoons of vinegar. I'm going to try and show this to you guys. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. So these are black beans. I'm spilling water on the counter. Yeah. Ah, you're you not going to be able to see, see it. I'm going to dump water on the counter. Yes. Um, um, but anyway, ahead. so with the two teaspoons of, two tablespoons of vinegar. White vinegar. White vinegar, and it separates, I forget the terminology. There's an enzyme, There's I think. There's some kind of there. enzyme on there that... Um, causes gas and it causes discomfort. Right. Um, I think you sent it to me and I think what it is is that there's an enzyme in the in the bean that tells the bean to stay dormant. Right. But when it gets moist, that's what it is, you're right. It tells it, okay, it's time to sprout and it right. kind of releases the shell a little bit. Right. And it lets the air out. And what I was trying to show you is that these black beans that I've had soaking overnight that I put a little bit of vinegar in have a there's white bubbles on the top right. of it. So you can see you saw that I'm gonna pick it up so you can see it. The water's black because obviously they're black beans. This bowl right. is clear. Um, but on the top of it, it has these tiny little, it looks like sea foam bubbles. And those, that's the, what usually ferments in your gut and causes gas. Right. So we're getting rid of that ferment, fermentation prior to cooking it and then prior to eating it. Right. And um, in the article, somebody said that he doesn't eat at Mexican restaurants because they don't soak their beans. And right. beans at Mexican restaurants cause gas for him. But that when he cooks them at home and he soaks them, he doesn't have that issue. Right. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's the same is true with canned beans versus dry beans you get yourself and soak, right. or if canned beans, because they've been sitting in the can, if they're okay. And I don't know the answer to that. And I'm, I, not, I, I'm not going to do research on that. No. My guess is as long as you rinse them really well, because if you don't rinse them, some people don't. 
Right. Then you're just taking everything that's in the can and putting it into the pot. So. Right. Right. So soak your beans, whatever beans you have, and you can throw them all in one one bowl. Somebody asked me that today at the gym. Is it okay to soak beans together? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Throw all of them in one in one big bowl. Cover mm -hmm. it with water. Make sure it's covered well because they are going to expand obviously right. as they absorb water, and then let them sit overnight. Um, somebody did point out to me that if you have an Instapot, you don't have to soak them. But that means you don't have the chance to let the little gas bubbles get out of right. them and you're going to deal with that in your gut. Right, exactly. So something to know about eating beans and gas and eating cruciferous, there we yeah, go, can't say that word maybe, <laughs> vegetables and gas. So, and the second thing then, we'll switch to the other subject. Um, I wanted to talk about erectile dysfunction because that's something that um, is pretty common in the literature, but it's not talked about a lot. Um, you do see it if you watch... It's in Forks Over Knives a little bit. Um, Dr. Esselstein talked about Dr. it. Dr. Esselstein the, uh, talks about it. Because yeah. he's got, you know, he's got patients that have the change, the experience right. of change. Yeah. So what the, the point is, is that most, not all, but most erectile dysfunction is caused because the blood flow to the organ is not what it should be. And that's caused by artery disease. Right. So there is some who say that erectile dysfunction is the canary in the coal mine to coronary heart disease. Right. Obviously, the arteries and stuff that are in your heart are much larger than those that are in the penis. And so the penis is the first one. If you're having artery disease, those arteries get clogged quickly and blood doesn't flow as well as it can. Right. And that can lead to erectile dysfunction. Right. So if you eat a whole food plant-based diet that we've talked about can help reverse heart disease and can help your um, endothelial cells which I'm glad the, you weren't waiting for me to come up with No, that. I know you're not going to find it. I had to find it. Endothelial cells, which are the cells that line your blood vessels. Like right. We've talked about that word before. They line your blood vessels and keep your blood from being sticky, and then the blood flow gets better. And so they do talk about, Essel, Dr. Esselstein talks about it, mm -hmm. and they talk about it in um, Forks Over Knives, right. that men who have experienced erectile dysfunction, when they've gone on a whole food plant-based um, diet, have been able to raise what they say, raise the flag again. They have raised the flagpole. Yeah. Not not a problem. Yeah. Yes, and um, so what was funny about it, the way um, Dr. Esselstein talked about it, is he has these people in his study, and he's again very strict about no nuts, no very seeds. Very strict. Yes, and, and he's dealing with very severe patients, patients that have basically been told by their coronary doctors that prepare your, get all your things together because you're not going to be here for very long. You only have maybe three months. Right. Exactly. And he was not only saving these people's lives, but he, he tells the story about one gentleman that called him up, I don't know how many years later, and he says, I think I owe you another check. And then he goes to explain, you know, that, that things started working again. Yeah, the, the functionality returned. Right. And so once again, we're talking about the pharmaceutical companies can certainly help you with drugs. They don't fix the problem, they just treat the, treat symptoms. the symptom. Or you can go to a whole food plant-based diet and possibly cure the, 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 yeah resolve the problem right. on, on your own exactly. and so you know i was talking to somebody in the gym today and she was saying that her husband's really not on board with this he's a meat and potatoes kind of guy and you know pound your chest man right. kind of thing and i said well tell him about this and she goes yeah so maybe that's something that if that's what motivates them hey you know what sometimes that's sometimes fine. a guy needs a good swift kick in the you know what <laughs> Make a decision. Right. So as um, Rip at Esselstein says, real men eat plants. <laughs> <laughs> so that's right. That's the information I wanted to share with you today about um, gas and um, rectal dysfunction. You don't have to deal with gas on this diet. That you, there are ways to deal with it. Your gut will get used to it, and you can get rid of it from your beans. And you can you can eliminate erectile dysfunction, which you and your partner will probably appreciate. Both, both is something for both of you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and uh, yes, and incidentally, we did film our talk last night. However, we have not had the opportunity to look at how that came out because neither one of us could operate the camera because obviously we were both on stage. We just set it up and said, "Good luck." <laughs> right. So if if it came out decently enough, then it will be on our website. Yeah, that's our yeah. goal. So, so um, you, we'll take a look at that. Right. But. Uh, this weekend we have we have a rock concert. We tomorrow. have a rock concert to go to yeah. for the uh, uh, it's a benefit for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Delaware. Yeah. And a friend of mine is graduating um, on Sunday, and I think she's having a I don't know some kind of little get together Saturday night. So we're gonna do that. Um, I don't know what that looks like, but we'll see. Right, exactly. So that's all I have to share with you. I today. think that's all I have. So all right. I guess we'll end today and join the weekend by saying eat real food. 
Not too much. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have a great we'll day, see you guys. on Monday.